I think tax avoidance is a, actually a very complicated subject, particularly for the British media, because, of course, this country actually harbours the largest tax avoidance havens in the world. We have, I think, at least 13 of them, which are directly connected to the Crown, directly connected to the government. The Legislative Assembly of the Cayman Islands has only 15 members, but as they represent some of the richest constituencies in the world, it was appropriate that the Queen should grant them a state opening. In her speech, she avoided referring to the joys of tax havens, discreetly speaking of encouraging the private sector. So the West Indies part of the tour ended, pointing up a small irony. The Queen was leaving one of the richest islands on the globe to fly to Mexico, one of the most bankrupt of nations. In the ocean of global tax avoidance and offshore tax havens, the United Kingdom is the major dominant current. Of the 73 jurisdictions listed in the Global Financial Secrecy Index, nearly half are directly connected to the United Kingdom. The most notorious of these territories, singing God Save the Queen as a national anthem beneath the unfurling Union Jacks, are the Caribbean havens, Cayman Islands, Bermuda and the British Virgin Islands. So there's a, there's a huge kind of British flavour to the, to the offshore zone. And all the different nodes in the network are kind of half in and half out of Britain. The reality of the independence of these territories from the UK is based on how useful it is to argue that they are independent or not. There are no clearly set rules. There are conventions and norms and when it is useful, the British governments be claimed that they are completely independent. The relationship between the UK and its overseas territories, like the Cayman Islands, is a complex one. I actually think they're a little different from county councils, to bring it down to sort of terms that most people might understand. And it's very difficult to explain to people why, and you need to get people to understand the complexities of a country which once had an empire is running a number of small island offshore tax havens and yet he's saying we want people to pay all their taxes here. It doesn't add up. How did these far off islands, as topographically and climatically distinct from the mother island as one can imagine, come to be British? It's one of the most extraordinary transformation not only of the British state, but uh, of any development that took place in the second part of the 20th century. On the face of it, the British Empire simply disappeared, melted away within a decade, a decade and a half. But in reality, in the, within the ashes of this British Empire's kernel re-emerge of what I would call the second British Empire. Those islands, changed tremendously and in some ways not as much as you may think. These are not Dubai's. These are not Abu Dhabi of this world where, or Shanghai. You don't see them, you don't hear them. Um, you have to know where to go in order to see a brass plate. So in that sense, you will not see this high-rise building of modern finance in Cayman or Bermuda. You still see, but you see well. 